Listen carefully to what Obama, Barack Hussein Obama, addresses in his very last White House correspondent dinner. At the very beginning of his speech, listen to what he says. You can't say it, but you know it's true. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. It is an honor to be here at my last and perhaps the last White House Correspondents Day. <laughs> you all look great. The end of the Republic has never looked better. You can't say it, but you know it's true. At my last and perhaps the last White House Correspondents Day. <laughs> the end of the Republic has never looked better. The first thing he says is, you can't say it, but you know it's true. I put heavy emphasis on that because I believe somehow, some way, that while he was making those statements, he was jokingly telling the truth, giving it to you right in front of you. And I'll explain. Let's put a pause on this Obama situation right now, and let's go and look at ancient Israel, and let's see if there's a reflection between the past and the present. Today is 2016, president number 44. Is there a lesson to be learned from the past? Let's go and find out. When we go to look at the history of ancient Israel, the Kingdom of Israel was once a strong united kingdom. It ruled from about 1025 to 925 BC. The first kings which are well recognized in scripture are King Saul, King David and King Solomon. The rough estimate is between 925 and 921 BC that the Kingdom of Israel divided. The northern part of Israel remained known as Israel. The southern part became known as the Kingdom of Judah. They officially became separate nations with separate kings, two different kingdoms. The northern kingdom, Israel, would have a total of 19 kings from roughly 925 to 721 BC. And the southern kingdom, in the Kingdom of Judah, they would have roughly 20 kings from 925 to about 586 BC. The two combined brings a total number of 39 kings between the divided kingdoms. However, though it became divided, it still is Israel. When we take the 39 kings and add them to the first three kings of united Israel, what we get is a total of 42 kings. Remember, the three kings that people recognize are King Saul, King David, and King Solomon. So we get a total of 42 kings. But the question is, is it really 42 kings? Interestingly enough, we can say no, because there are two more kings which are missing. And I'll prove that to you right now. Let's go and revisit the reign of King David. This one is specifically dealing with David and Absalom. Now, if you would recall, Absalom is one of King David's sons. He fled away from the kingdom of his father upon killing his half-brother, Amnon, because Amnon had slept with his sister. And after fleeing away, he spent years outside of his father's household to the point where he became a judge where he was at. And then he also decided that, you know what, maybe he can be a great king, in fact, better than his father. And thus began the conspiracy and controversy to overthrow his father's kingdom and become the next king of Israel. Now, the Bible does record that Absalom, his movement grew rapidly. In other words, his conspiracy to become the next king, that conspiracy grew in large number in such a way that Absalom won the hearts of the Israelites, just as the word of God records. And on this man did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. 
the majority was on the side of Absalom. They basically turned their back on King David. And just as scripture notes, King David vacates the throne and he flees away from his kingdom. In 2 Samuel chapter 15 verses 14 through 17, we get this here. I'm just going to quickly read it for you. It says, And David said unto all his servants that were with him at Jerusalem, Arise, and let us flee, for we shall not else escape from Absalom. Make speed to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly, and bring evil upon us, and smite the city with the edge of the sword. And the king's servants said unto the king, Behold, thy servants are ready to do whatsoever my lord the king shall appoint. And in verse 17, it says, And the king went forth, and all the people after him, and tarried in a place that was far off. I'm showing you this so you can understand that Absalom won by election. He won by politics, just like it is being done in America and present-day nations. You win the hearts of the people and they put you in the position of power. That is what Absalom did. Many people undermine the reign of Absalom and they completely dismiss him from the line of the people who have sat on the throne. Absalom reigned only for a few days, maybe about three or four days as king. And then he died. And then King David came back and took the throne once again. Just because Absalom did not reign for long, it does not mean he was not king of Israel because he was. The throne was vacated and he came and took over the throne but only lasted for a few days. That's it. So by this you can understand and see clearly that King David's reign as king was divided in half. It was divided in two. King David was the second ruler of Israel. Then Absalom came and took over the throne lasted for a short time and then King David came back again. So King David was both second and fourth king of Israel and the third ruler of Israel was Absalom. And now when we redo the calculations what we get is a total of 44 kings. 44 kings in ancient Israel. Now let's look at the interesting parallels between ancient Israel and the land of the United States of America. King David was an interrupted king. Well guess what? In the United States of America, Grover Cleveland was the 22nd president of the United States of America whose reign as president also was interrupted. His reign was interrupted by Benjamin Harrison who became the 23rd president of the United States of America. And then again Grover Cleveland would go and outvote or defeat Benjamin Harrison and become the 24th president of the United States of America. He was both 22nd and 24th president of the United States. And all the way now through 2016 now we have exactly president number 44. The very first black African American president of the United States of America Barack Hussein Obama. And what are the chances of this? At the time of the 44th president of the United States of America, the world is at a turmoil. The economic world is in pain. Both civil and worldwide unrest is shaking the world around us. We're living in a time of great terror attacks. Terrorists are attacking different innocent countries. They're attacking innocent lives, attacking children. Children are being raped. We're living in a time where spiritual confusion and spiritualism is the one that is basically taking over society. We're living in a world that is infested by the demonic. Demons have infiltrated almost nearly all aspects of life. And men and women, old and young, possessed by demons, are committing horrific deeds that the human mind cannot fully be able to comprehend. And now we're at a point where People don't even know what marriage is anymore. People are so confused, burned in their own lust for strange flesh to the point where they have decided to change that which was once sacred. Though you are born either a male or a female, 
you can now decide that you were not meant to be that which you were born with. In your mind you are of a different gender or you are a different creature or you are this and that and society must comply and no one should tell you that that is false. The main thing that you must understand is we are living in a time where all the laws of the land that have been passed protect things which are ungodly and truth is the new hate crime. Once again, truth is the new hate crime. The two-horned beast which appears as a lamb but speaks as a dragon, the United States of America has fallen and the hour is here where America is already building that image to the beast, to the first beast and is going to cause all both small and great, both rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their foreheads or in their right hands. The hour is coming ladies and gentlemen when you are going to be forced to accept and follow the rules and abide by the law which is going to be passed that goes directly against the laws of God and against his words and against his commandments and anyone who chooses not to go with the laws of the land that go against the word of God they shall be put to death. This is a given guarantee that the Bible does make self-evident it makes that clearly visible for you to see that those who choose to follow the right path are going to be put in prisons and shall be persecuted. All of these things will happen. The question is are you ready to stand up for this? Going back to answering the question is Obama the last president of the United States of America? To answer the question we don't have a time machine to go in the future and look. However we can make the discernment that given the times that we're living in anything goes. Anything is fair games. Also it's pretty obvious at this point in time America has way too many enemies. And let's not forget the economic world. Things are looking pretty sour. Eventually the current system is going to have to crash in order for a new system to be established that will be more fruitful in a way. And knowing that the Vatican is going to play a key role in this and the Pope, Pope Francis is going to play a major role in this there's a good chance things are making their way back to the old world order, to the old system of government just as it was in the medieval periods, also known as the dark ages of earth's history. This ladies and gentlemen should give you the hint that the middle class is going to be wiped out, they will be gone and all you're going to be left with is the first class and you have the peasants, you have the rich and the poor no middle ground. As of now none of us knows how the presidential election is going to play out tomorrow. We don't know who's going to be the next leader if there's going to be any other. We don't know what's going to happen that will possibly cause the elections to be seized or, or, or stopped or paused. If there's going to be a national emergency we don't know. So all of that is up to speculation. Other than that ladies and gentlemen do not be blind to the truth. That would be my only best advice. Do not reject anything that anyone is sharing with you. Take as much information as you can learn now while you still have the chance to learn truth. Do not be blind to it and look at things from one side because that is where you fall in a dangerous path. Carefully examine things but make sure that you use proper discernment. That way then you will not be deceived. Other than that ladies and gentlemen this is the Controversy 7. Thank you for tuning in and for joining me. Feel free to go on my website, I do have some interesting things there for those that want to make YouTube videos and they're looking for musical soundtracks, I have them on my, ch on my website there. Um, you can feel free to go there www.thecontroversy7.ca. I'm not going to hold you off ladies and gentlemen, feel free to join me on Facebook, my link is in the description box. You take care of yourselves and stay safe.